Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. For podcasts, DwyerBoxingNews.com. Today is Thursday, July the 22nd, 2021. The WBO has ordered Terrence Crawford to fight Sean Porter. Let's talk about it. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just say, we're going to have differing opinions on this fight, as you could imagine. Right? Some of you believe, no doubt, that Sean Porter is going to be the most meaningful opponent Terrence Crawford has ever faced. Right? The argument is that Crawford has been a master at catching fighters at the right time, right? So he fights Amir Khan a little bit past Amir Khan's expiration date. He fights Kell Brook after Kell Brook gets his eyes busted in the Golovkin fight and in the Errol Spence fight, right? The argument is that Kell Brook was softened up a bit by the time he fought Terrence Crawford. So there are many of you who doubt who Crawford is at 147 pounds, right? Many of you firmly believe that Terrence Crawford is not competitive with Errol Spence. Now here is Sean Porter, a guy who arguably gave Spence his toughest fight. A guy who beat Danny Garcia a guy who lost a razor-close fight to Keith Thurman. Here's Sean Porter. He's high action. He's going to force you to fight back. He's like Joe Fraser. He's bobbing and weaving. He's getting inside. He's daring you to trade with him. He's prepared to get hit to hit you. Right? He's going to what I call run red lights. In other words, he's going to do things he shouldn't be doing. Right, Leaving himself open to get hit so he can jump in the pocket and hit you. Understand, too, his loss to Cal Brook hotly disputed. Right? The feeling was that to survive, Kell Brook had to hold Sean Porter when Sean Porter jumped in the pocket. Right? For the record, I thought Kell Brook won that fight. But just to understand, Porter since then is a little bit more experienced. He doesn't allow guys to hold him as much when he jumps in the pocket. Right? He comes in, he's throwing punches with both hands. Right? And he's bouncing. Well, let me just say this, and I don't say it lightly. You know, if all of us get to heaven, one of the fights we have to ask for is Sean Porter against Marvin Hagler. Right? Porter dares you to go faster than you want to go. So too did Marvin Hagler. It'd be interesting to see what would happen. They'd have to find a way to equalize weight. Although Porter, if you look into his past, used to be heavier. But let's just say Sean Porter is that guy who, if you're accustomed to driving 40 cautiously, he's going to force you to drive 65. Then there'll be some questions. Can you handle a guy aggressively trying to take control of the pocket, jumping inside? Right? Are you ready to deal with the guy who's vertical? Right? Sean Porter comes in, he's up top, then he's down low. He's bouncing up and down. Right? Errol Spence, quite frankly, is very fortunate that he knocked Sean Porter down with an excellent left hand later in that fight. That made a close fight look like Spence had the edge. Right? But for that knockdown, who knows what would have happened? Well, let me just backtrack a little bit. 
You know, guys who like precision, Floyd Mayweather, for example, it might surprise some people that when they ask Mayweather who fought, you name it, Canelo, countless other people, right? As I like to say, Diego Corrales, when they ask Mayweather who was the toughest opponent he's fought, right? Mayweather includes the name of Emmanuel Augustus. And people are always puzzled because Augustus wasn't an elite fighter, right? Let's remember, Mayweather fights Ricky Hatton, for example, when Ricky Hatton was unbeaten, right? He fights Diego Corrales when Diego Corrales was unbeaten, right? He fights Oscar De La Hoya when Oscar was the biggest draw in boxing outside of the heavyweight division. But yet, Floyd mentions Emmanuel Augustus. Why? Because of what we're talking about. Floyd's a technician who doesn't believe in getting hit. When he's fighting a guy who is running red lights, is basically telling him, go ahead and hit me. Because as you throw punches, I'll be throwing punches. I'm prepared to trade. I'm not even here to avoid your shots. That throws many fighters off. But here's what I think is going to happen. I believe in this fight, Terrence Crawford is going to show you why he's great. Not only that, when you're dealing with a fighter the level of a Terrence Crawford, and I consider Crawford to be the best in the sport pound for pound, Right? A fighter like Crawford is going to show you the holes in the other fighter's game. You're going to be watching the fight and you're going to be thinking, doggone, I, I've seen a lot of Sean Porter fights. And I've never seen him treated this way. Understand, there's a foundational difference between the two fighters. Terrence Crawford, and I know he got cuffed around by Mean Machine. Let's be real here. But Terrence Crawford is much better defensively. I mean much better defensively than Sean Porter. Right? Understand, Sean Porter, the illusion Sean sets up that gets people in trouble is a fighter comes in against Porter who's a little bit shorter. And the fighter tries to hit Porter with his jab. And Porter is bouncing. Porter is moving his head. Right? Porter's up and down. Porter's in and out. So, shooting a jab at Porter is perilous. Because Porter slips the jab. Guess what? Here's Porter deep in the pocket. Guess what? Porter's two-handed. Porter's turning this into a brawl. Your carefully calibrated game where you're going to land precise surgical counters goes out the window because here's a guy and he's rough and tumble and he's deep in the pocket. He slipped your jab. You got to do something. You try to hold him. Porter now knows to keep his hands moving. He's a problem. But I believe nobody studies film more than Terrence Crawford, right? As I like to say here, Crawford's a different fighter every fight. Crawford's going to look on film, and he's going to realize that rather than hit Sean Porter with jabs, he has to assume that Sean Porter is going to be about where his chest is. And that Sean Porter, after he throws his punches, after he tries to get aggressive with a lot of energy, to run red lights, to force you to fight faster than you want to, Crawford is going to realize that as Porter throws punches, he's wide open. Folks, he's wide open. You can hit him with flush shots. Let me go one step further and say, 
Terence Crawford, whether it's against Victor Postal, whether it's against Amir Khan, Crawford knows how to fight on the move. Crawford understands, okay, look, this fighter is going to be open during these sequences, right? Porter comes in, he's bouncing. Porter will then throw this hand. And folks, he's naked right here, right? He's naked. He'll throw this hand, he's naked. Then he's going to try to throw this hand and come in and make it spirited. If you could time the counter hooks, both hands, right? If you could also split the uprights, don't hit Porter, don't aim for Porter's head, but aim for Porter's chest to knock Porter back. And if you could move, so you're forcing Porter to turn, I believe you can deconstruct Porter. Right? Easier said than done. Folks, this is a great fight. Let me also say, too, that I believe that punchers are born. They're not made. I've seen guys not look like they have a hard punch. But then when you're looking at their opponents, the opponent is getting beaten up. Right, Carlos Monzon. You would see Monzon, heavy-handed guy. And he'd be hitting a guy. Monzon wouldn't even look like he's leaning into the punch. And the other guy would fall down badly hurt. You know, Julio Cesar Chavez, the fighter from the 80s. Right, you see him against guys like Roger Mayweather. The fighters look like they're you know, landing shots. Mayweather looks like he has the upper hand. But then you notice Mayweather fall to the canvas and you understand, oh, I, I guess the Chavez shots were heavier than the Mayweather shots. Now, this will be controversial. But I believe Crawford had more to worry about against Mean Machine, the guy who I feel gave him his hardest match. Look up that match. Then he does against Sean Porter because Mean Machine is a gifted puncher and he's sudden. Sean Porter looks like he's a big puncher. Right? Porter is energetic. He's bringing the energy. Looks like he's getting a lot of leverage. He's leaning into shots. Right? But Porter isn't the heavy puncher that Crawford just faced. The guy who, by the way, is about to fight Virgil Ortiz, another gifted puncher. So I believe Porter can only win this fight in the later part of the fight. I believe the only guy who has a shot at a KO in this fight is going to be Terrence Crawford. Right? The time to jump on Crawford, in my opinion, is early in a fight. Before Crawford figures you out. Because once he does, folks, the fight is over. And here, you can tell Porter is going to be open for hooks, right? Defense is something you either have every fight or you don't have it enough, right? The guys who are defensive, they just naturally know, okay, I'm coming in here. I need to have a hand up. Right? I need to roll. The way Porter beats Danny Garcia, right? One of Porter's best moments is by eating a lot of hellacious Danny Garcia shots. I was looking at that film and preparing for this video, and I was astonished by how flush Danny Garcia, who can punch, hit Porter. 
right? Porter is Sean Porter because of his chin. Now, let me just say this. Guys with great chins have them until the chin gets dented, right? Errol Spence hits John Porter so hard. I want people to revisit that knockdown, right? That Porter couldn't even hide how badly hurt he was. I have the highlights from both the Danny Garcia fight and the Errol Spence fight in my favorites folder here online. Now I know for some reason we don't consider Crawford to be a puncher, right? What I want people to do is to look at Crawford's KO percentage. I want people to realize that Mean Machine was unbeaten before Crawford stopped him. I want folks to think about Crawford's recent fights. Amir Khan, that fight doesn't go the distance, folks. Kel Brook, that fight doesn't go the distance. I've just told you, Mean Machine, that fight doesn't go the distance. Right, Crawford, one of Crawford's problems, his challenges, it's not a problem, but it's a challenge, is Crawford looks a little bit too smooth in the ring. You don't realize that Crawford is putting together knockouts until you look at his record. If you go to gamblersadvisory.com, yes, a shameless plug, you'll see one of the few videos I have on that site is a video of Terence Crawford. Right, folks, it's devastating. Crawford's hitting guys and they're hurt. Crawford has punching power. The reason we don't realize it is because of how it's framed. Right, you're looking at Crawford and you're seeing excellent defense. You're seeing a guy switch from righty to lefty. You're seeing patience. Make no mistake, Crawford, believe it or not, when he hurts you, he's one of the premier closers in boxing. So here's what I think happens. I think the early rounds, Sean Porter's going to look good. Porter's going to come across the ring. There's a certain Derek Chisora in Sean Porter. Right? Porter's going to come across the ring at a time when a lot of fighters would be saying, okay, where am I? Gee, how am I going to fight this guy? Let me, let me get accustomed to fighting in front of this crowd. Let me warm up a bit before we get into the rough and tumble. That's not Sean Porter. Right? Sean Porter's going to come across the ring. Porter understands. He needs to get the judges on his side early. He needs to raise room temperature because Porter's a little bit awkward, right? Up and down, in and out. He needs to take advantage of that awkwardness before he becomes familiar to the technician he's fighting, right? Errol Spence in the Sean Porter fight looked like a deer caught in headlights early in that fight, right? Porter comes across the ring you know, Spence's punch doesn't matter. Sean Porter is going to come in. He's going to be reckless. He's going to dare Spence to open up. Spence really doesn't get his rhythm until halfway through that fight. Well, I believe Sean Porter is going to come out. The difference, though, is this fighter, Terrence Crawford has spent his entire career coming up with opponent-specific game plans for whoever he's fighting. So Crawford will have a game plan tailored for Sean Porter. Right? Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. I could tell you I was looking at Porter, excuse me, at Crawford, against Mean Machine and... <laughs> Mean Machine lands several right hooks. And you're watching it and you're thinking, what the hell is Terrence Crawford doing? 
right? You understood. Crawford somehow thought that the right hook would be that sudden. Crawford was thrown off early in that fight. Again, that's the best challenge made to date against Terrence Crawford, in my opinion. But if Crawford gets it right, Crawford could run away with this match. It's even worse than that. If Crawford figures out early how to defend himself, and keep in mind, Crawford can hit and move. Crawford could also stay in the pocket, right? Crawford could jab you to death. Crawford could hook you to death. Crawford is extremely accurate with his punches. I want people to look at the last two rounds of the Me Machine fight. The video's here on YouTube. And look at Crawford's feet. Folks, Crawford is getting so deep in the pocket against a guy I consider one of the harder punchers pound for pound in boxing. Right, dare I say Crawford's feet look like Usyk's feet, another elite talent. Right, so I get the feeling this fight comes down to Crawford's learning curve. I don't believe Sean Porter hits hard enough to stop Terrence Crawford, who hasn't lost, he's unbeaten, early in the fight. I believe Sean Porter could certainly make Crawford look bad. Right, so I believe Sean Porter comes out, he's going to try to raise room temperature immediately. He's going to try to light the roof on fire immediately. Right, think Joe Fraser. Right, a good Joe Fraser fight is Joe Fraser against Bob Foster, another Hall of Famer. Great light heavyweight. Right, Joe Fraser comes out, let's just say Bob, a great fighter. One of the hardest punchers in the history of boxing, pound for pound, look him up, does not make it to the third round. Right? I expect Porter to come out. Porter doesn't have the Joe Fraser left hook. I expect Porter to come out and to try to make Terrence Crawford look bad. Don't go by the activity. The number of punches thrown, how active Porter is. What I want you instead to go by are the punches landed. Right? Fans don't give enough credit to fighters who block shots, which is what Crawford's going to do. In other words, Porter might throw a left hand and you say, oh! And then you notice on the replay, Crawford had a hand up, blocked a shot. Right? Look at whether Crawford is pinned to the pocket or whether Crawford can move laterally. Because if he can move laterally, He's going to destabilize Sean Porter over time. Look at Porter's hooks. If Porter is able to land hooks or uppercuts, something that you can do when a fighter bends, like Sean Porter, and is as open as Sean Porter is. Again, Porter's going to bend. Porter's head's going to be, at times, about chest level against Crawford. If you see Crawford landing clean hooks, knowing that Porter has a structural defensive problem, then this fight might not go the distance. So the fight, the bet I like, just to try to maximize odds. I haven't seen the odds yet. I expect Terrence Crawford to be favored. He should be favored. Right? The bet I like to maximize return here and to hedge risk is to take Crawford by stoppage. I know that sounds crazy, right? Porter went the distance with Errol Spence, right? Um, it's to take Crawford, a unique talent, by stoppage. For the record, I feel Usyk has a shot at stopping Joshua. Right? Same type thing. I like Crawford by stoppage. We're going to go high risk here because we're trying to get a rate of return. Hedged with the over in the fight. But understand the risk involved. 
if Sean Porter comes out and lands shots, if in fact Crawford is a hype job with an overstated resume, and if Crawford isn't ready to fight, an elite guy at 147 who's already been in the ring with Keith Thurman, with Errol Spence. By the way, Porter has sparred with Manny Pacquiao, right? Let's just say Porter's a guy who's been in the ring with elites. You might recall, too, he beat Adrian Broner back when we thought Broner was big, right? If Crawford isn't prepared for a Porter at 147, again, keeping in mind that Crawford was undisputed at 140. This is 147. And if Crawford is able to, excuse me, if Porter is able to stop Crawford, who was knocked down, the ref missed it, we didn't, who was knocked down in the Mean Machine fight, inside of the over-under, you lose it all. That's the risk we're taking. Right? I believe Crawford has a shot at a stoppage. I believe you're going to get goosed odds at the stoppage. But if the fight goes the distance, you're covered because you have the over. Right? If this is your prototypical close Sean Porter fight, because let's face it, we didn't quite know how the judges were going to rule. In that Sean Porter Errol Spence fight. If this is a close fight that goes to decision, that's okay. Because you have the over. You're covered. So, when the odds are released, if they're what I expect, if they're not, I'll make a follow up video. But if they're what I expect, I'm going to take Crawford by stoppage, hedged with the over. Right? If you ask me who's going to win this fight, I'm leaning Crawford. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.